Hey, how's it going everybody? Taco from Taco Tuesday here, and today I'm bringing you another base build. So the video I did earlier this week, which was also a base build, did very well on the likes. Therefore, I'm going to be releasing a second base build this week, which is why we're here today. Anyways, today we're going over another solo base, but today's solo base is a lot smaller compared to the one we did the other day. Alright, on to some base stats. So this base is going to be very, very cheap, costing you 7,800 stone, 1,500 wood, and 2,000 metal frags. A little bit of extra information, this base is super strong for its price. It's going to take around 33 satchel charges or 12 rockets just to raid this little dinky thing. So what we're doing to make this base so strong is what I'm showing you right here. So, this is a honeycombed one by one, it's not the base that I'm featuring in the video because obviously I don't want to spoil things yet. So how this actually works is the outside will be stone but the inside will be metal, so it'll be stronger than it actually appears. So instead of this one by one just being a simple 4c4 or 8 rocket raid, instead it's now a 6c4 or 12 rocket raid. And because the metal is not visible from the outside, you can actually deceive the raiders into thinking that this base is a lot easier than it actually is, so they might not bring enough supplies to come and raid you, resulting in a failed raid. Finishing up these last few points, this base is intended for casual solo players, meaning if you're the type of person who doesn't really like to farm that much, doesn't really like to build, instead you love to just settle out somewhere in the forest and just PvP all day, this is the perfect base for you. Moreover, it's got tons of storage so you can store all that gear that you achieve from PvPing, and it's expandable so you don't really have to have all the resources right away. And that's pretty much it for the base stats, so I know you guys are eager, so let's move on with the base tour. Alright, here we are with the base tour. Here's the base right here. And notice here to the left that there's a metal barricade and a metal wall. Metal barricade is optional, that's just for, you know, decoy looks, but the metal wall is required, which we'll get to later in the base build. So here we are with a sheet metal door, because, you know, the sheet metal door kind of makes the base look weaker, and as well as a shotgun turret that will kill anybody who is camping the door. These come in handy, especially for solo players and bases of this size. Why? Because, you know, as a solo player, you don't really have the ability and the resources to create alternate door camp protection besides the typical airlock. So enough about the shotgun turret, the room we're actually in right now is our first airlock. It's also a secondary storage room, so as you see up there if I jump, it used to actually not be a room at first when I first built this base. Uh, it used to be just two boxes up there where you can run out and run back in and just drop gear in, but the way you get up here is actually through a door jump, and this is one of the old tricks that I used to use in my old small base designs, and it's where you just jump on top of the door to get up to the next floor. Uh, if you don't have the laggiest computer, and if you have the BP, please try to set up a ladder because if you open the door, obviously people will be able to just rush in and kill you. So make sure you try to get a ladder set up there. Also, if you're afraid of people door camping and getting into this top room over here, what you could do is you could set up a door over here. I didn't because, you know, it kind of ruins the aesthetic of the base and also it costs extra resources. Although, if you do set up a door, it has to be a double door because as you see, you can't fit through a single door. So you'll have to set up a double door there and a wall to the right. Onto the actual loft or attic room or whatever you want to call it. Um, this is actually one of my favorite parts of the base. Uh, why? Because it just looks really cool. So, off here to the left, we have room for a planter, which, you know, you can just have it for aesthetic or for food production. Next up, we have a bed right over here, which there's two beds. There's a large bed, which is the one over here, and a sleeping bag, which is further in the base. You can give one to a friend and give one to yourself or just keep both for yourself. It's up to you. Behind the bed we have three large boxes and two small boxes for storage. I don't recommend putting too good of gear in here, you just use them as dump boxes or just random storage. Enough with the attic room, so down here we have our garage doors which leads further in the base. So why would I use garage doors? Garage doors are actually cheaper than armor doors, but stronger than sheet metal doors. So it's like a perfect median for the base to balance between strong and also solo. Right here, as I'm demonstrating, we have a campfire, as well as two forges to smelt metal and cook meat. If you get rid of the campfire and you put a furnace in its place, you can have three furnaces, which would smelt metal faster, but also you kind of ruin the aesthetic and it makes things cramped. And finally, here we are into the main 2x1 of the base. Notice how the entirety of this 2x1 is completely metal. 
This is very deliberate, which I'll explain later in this video. Let's go ahead and reopen that garage door, and we're going to digest this compact mess into two chunks, starting with this left chunk right over here. So over here to the left, we have our research table in our workbench, and as well as two boxes right here and right here, which will be used to store components. Off here to the right, and I guess sort of towards the middle, we have our window, which, you know, of course lets us get the wonderful view of the outside world and the forest. And below that, we have ourselves our sleeping bag. We obviously have the bed in the attic room, so if you want to give this one to a friend or you want to keep this one for yourself, completely up to you, as said before. On to main storage. So in terms of box count for the central storage room, we have five large boxes and one small box, and as well as they're covered for our resources. So just to show you, you can access these back two boxes. In this box right here, we have our barricade, and now you don't see it. So that shows you that we can access the back one over there, and the same thing for this one. But here, we have some metal frags, and then you can access the back one right there. So as you guys can see, you have a lot of storage that is being protected in the central loot room, and this is the hardest spot to raid, so I do suggest putting your weapons, your armor, your meds, anything that's just high of value in this room. As stated before, here is your cupboard, which will once again be used for resource storage. And that's pretty much it for the base tour, guys. So if you are enjoying the base build so far, be sure to drop a like because it does help more than you think. And anyways, guys, let's move on with the base build. Alright, so before I give like a full on tutorial on this base and show you how to build it, I kind of want to dissect it for you guys. So here's the foundation plan and over here to the right is the actual honeycomb and how everything works. So as stated before, the whole point of this base is to kind of deceive the raiders into thinking that this base is a lot easier to raid than it actually is, when in fact the center of the base is metal and when they blow into the first honeycomb, they're in for a little surprise. So a little method to my madness. As stated earlier, the wall off to the left of the doorway is metal, and that's for a reason. So the reason for that is because if somebody was to just blow through that wall and blow through the doorway, it wouldn't really be much different than blowing through just two stone walls. So the whole point of having that left wall as metal is to keep the consistency of this base being a 6C4 raid. Here we are with the base build, so what you're going to do is you're going to start off by placing a 2x1, like so. Then on one of the sides of the 2x1, you're going to set up a little trapezoid honeycomb, which is just three triangles, and then same thing for the other side. And on the remaining spots of the squares, you're just going to place two triangles. That way you get a shape like this. Then you're going to go ahead and upgrade all your foundations to stone. Just remember that the two center square foundations will eventually be upgraded to sheet metal. And now we're going to start boxing ourselves in. So place a doorway right here, upgrade that to stone, and then place a layer of walls all the way around the perimeter of the foundations. Once upgraded to stone, locate these little triangle pockets and then fill the ceiling in with just a stone triangle ceiling. Do that for the other side. Now we're going to go ahead and place in our 45 degree roofs. Make sure you're able to fit all 8 of them. And the last step before safety is guaranteed, you gotta obviously place a door down. You can either use a wood door and a normal lock, or a metal door and a code lock. So for the next few hours of your wipe, or until you can get enough metal, you're probably going to be living in an empty shell. If you decide to put down any furnaces, make sure it's to the right of the doorway. That way, you don't have to pick them up or break them. Once you're ready to continue building, go ahead and place two double doorway frames like so, and then upgrade the wall right behind the forges to metal. And then another important thing, make sure you place a triangle flooring right there and upgrade it to stone. And then next up, you're going to place two more triangle ceilings like so, and then you're going to remove the one above the doorway because that's where your ladder is going to go, or where your door jump will be so you can get to the second floor. Upgrade the remaining triangle to stone, and then you're going to... And then you're going to add another three triangles to the other side, except for all of these will be in place, so just upgrade all three to stone. On this triangle pocket right here, you're going to place a wall, but make sure you upgrade it to metal. And do the same thing for the other side.
Now we're going to fill in some of our honeycomb. So to the immediate left of the doorway, you're going to place a stone wall there. And then in this little crevice here that forms a V, you're going to place two walls. So one and two. And those will be stone as well. Now to complete the space's defense, you're going to place two walls right here and one wall on the other side. Then upgrade all three to metal. That way we can completely enclose the centerpiece with metal. Sorry guys, I made a little mistake here. So to the left, it's actually not going to be a full wall. It's going to be two half walls on top of each other. Make sure they're metal. The reason for this is so we can add a little shelf. Now place two ceilings on top of that and then upgrade that to metal as well as the two foundations below you. Once done, you're going to place in your garage doors. If you do not have the garage door BP, you can continue searching, or you can just use sheet metal double doors. Although if you use sheet metal double doors, it will not be as strong. Next, go ahead and place your workbench. Make sure it is as far left as possible. Then right in front of your workbench, you're going to place a research bench, as well as two boxes to the left of these structures. And in the back left corner of the 2x1, you're going to place your cupboard, but use the key R to rotate it so it's vertical. Or you can just orient yourself so it's placed like so. Then place a triangle ceiling on your half wall, and upgrade that to wood. And from there, place in your boxes. Now you gotta figure out a way of just getting up to your second floor. You can either use a small box or you can use the shotgun turret. For the base door, I use the shotgun turret to get on top of the door. If you have a bunch of BPs, then you might as well just make a ladder. Once you finally be able to pull off the door jump, now we're gonna work on the interior of our second floor. So. Once again, you can set up a doorway system up here. I'm not because I kind of like the aesthetic of it. Go ahead and place a chest all the way in the back and then one off to its right. And then even further to the right, you can place another large box if you can fit it, or you can just place small boxes. To the left of that back box, you're gonna place another large box. If I can get it down, there we go, I hope. Once that left box is placed down, you can either A, place a planter, or B, place another box. It's completely up to you. And then of course, go ahead and place your bed in the middle. And once you're done with that, you're pretty much done with the base. So anyways guys, that's pretty much it for the video. If you did enjoy and you wanna support me and keep me motivated, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. But anyways guys, I'll catch you in the next one.